Hey, Andy here. You ever watch a slick car commercial and wonder what inspired the shape of certain vehicles? Why they evolved the way they did? Why a coupe is called a coupe and why does it have an E at the end? Well, ponder no more, my friends, because I'm about to run down almost all the different vehicle types and help you decide what works best for you. Ask a kid to drive a car and 95% of the time it will be a sedan. It's what's known as a three box configuration. Four doors with a separate rear compartment and an engine compartment up front. Sedans range from subcompact to full size and prices vary widely. Typically they seat at least four people, the driver and three or more passengers. The word sedan was first used in 1600s Britain in reference to a cabinet contraption sat in by a single person and carried on poles by a person front and another behind. For automakers though, Studebaker first used the term sedan to refer to a vehicle body style that had four doors as far back as 1912. With so many other choices on the market today, sedans are less common than they used to be. The modern version has a relatively low seating position, plush ride, and a swath of power features for driver comfort. You can even find some models with heated rear seats and entertainment systems, emphasizing the fact that sedans are meant for more than a single occupant. Look, at some point, most drivers will own a sedan in their lifetime, simply because of its diversity. It's perfect for families, commuters, travelers, and business people alike. A coupe, in modern terms, is also a three-box configuration, but with just two doors and a fixed sloping hardtop roof. Some cars push the envelope and consider a four-door car with a truncated back seat a coupe, but that's less common. The term coupe is actually derived from the French verb coupé, meaning to cut. Because a coupe usually has a two doors and a shortened cabin area, it's a car that centers around the driver rather than the families. They're great for commuters, as long as carpooling isn't your thing, and over the years have been popular among the business class as well. If this is your family's second vehicle, it could be a fun, sexier option than a sedan, but if your passengers dig legroom, you might want to take a pass on the coupe. Otherwise, they'll feel a bit cooped up. Get it? Hold on to your hat for this next one. You might know it as a ragtop or drop top. If it's a car that has an optional roof, it's considered a convertible. Most vehicles in this category have a roof that can be retracted or detached, exposing the whole cabin to the sky. If you go back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, You'll find that most of the early models were open air vehicles. Closed in cabins only became mainstream in the 1920s. And the first example of a convertible with a top that could be opened and closed mechanically was in 1939 by Plymouth. Purists often look for manually operated tops and other variations like T-tops, target tops, and detachable roofs that still exist in limited capacities. If you didn't already guess, convertibles aren't considered the most practical cars mostly due to the top cutting into the trunk storage space. Also, the back seats, if there are any, tend to be cramped. Still, convertibles are popular for fun-loving drivers. As a matter of fact, empty nesters tend to be the highest volume consumers. If a car's primary purpose is to provide knee-shaking acceleration, on-a-dime handling, and top speeds that most people only dream of, it fits into the catch-all sports car category. The original term for a sports car was either touring car or roadster around the turn of the 20th century. As they evolved, higher displacement engines, elongated hoods, large wheels with low profile tires, and a two seat configuration became the trademark look. A sports car today is often lightweight and a 50-50 front to rear weight ratio is desirable for the best handling. Design features include an aerodynamic style, low to the ground posture, and composite body panels. Some luxury cars are exceptionally well equipped, but a more Spartan environment compared to other models is usually the norm. Generally, there's little focus on storage or passenger space, so sports cars aren't the ideal family car. Single with money to spare? Looking for a proverbial midlife crisis toy? Like things that go vroom? This may be the car that gets your motor running. Station wagons are passenger vehicles that have a two-box configuration an elongated body with either a tailgate or a liftgate at the rear. The interior space is continuous from the front row right through to the back. It also commonly has side windows in the cargo area 
and often has folding third row seats, which you may remember from your childhood road trips as I do as the Wayback or the Back Back. In 1910, a Ford Model T chassis was custom fitted with a wood panel carriage in the back to taxi people and their luggage from railway stations to their country estates, thus the alternative moniker of a state car. Station wagons are well known as family cars. Just ask Clark Griswold. They're also great for anyone who needs plenty of interior space in an easy to drive vehicle. The hatchback car body style is a derivative of sedans and coupes through the years. Rather than a trunk, hatchbacks have a large panel hinged at the roof line that often incorporates the rear window. It's usually sloped towards the rear end of the car and provides a larger opening to the cargo area. At the same time, hatchbacks don't have a solid separation between the passenger compartment and the truck. The original purpose for a production hatchback was to accommodate tradespeople who needed to carry bulky or larger objects in their vehicle. Sounds familiar, right? Well, not surprisingly, a lot of early hatchbacks were marketed as small station wagons. From there, sports cars and sedan body styles of various makes and models have used the hatchback design, although it's most popular among smaller, cost-efficient cars. You may hear hatchbacks referred to as three-door or five-door models. Another recent term you'll encounter is hot hatch, a hatchback with sporty styling and performance aspects. Since they're usually smaller cars, hatchbacks tend to make excellent vehicles for commuters, students, and their economical size and decent storage capacity makes them ideal for city dwellers. However, they're so versatile that almost anyone can find a use for a hatchback. Often associated as the vehicle of choice for overscheduled suburban soccer moms and dads, Minivans have a high roof, low floor height, and a sliding side door on one side or both. With at least two rows of seating and usually three, this vehicle's purpose is clear. It's a people hauler. However, select minivans with only front seats have been used as cargo vans by tradespeople. The first minivan was introduced in 1984 by Chrysler Corporation as the Dodge Caravan. Featured a much smaller body than the full-size van, hence Mini and had a wide opening lift gate and passenger side sliding door built on a unibody frame. Other entries used a full truck-like chassis, including the Ford Aerostar and Chevy Astro. Since then, minivans have become more luxurious, with roof or headrest mounted entertainment systems available, cabin monitors, optional leather upholstery, and more. That 10 minute ride from school to the practice field has never been more comfy. Hey look, you may not carpool a bunch of kids to their sports practice, but don't let that stop you. Minivans are appealing to a wide range of buyers, including families, travelers, business people, and people who prefer plenty of cargo space and high seating. Just be aware that finding the perfect spot in front of your favorite restaurant in the city may be challenging. Thank goodness for parking assist, am I right? SUVs, short for sport utility vehicle, are traditionally built on a truck style chassis for better durability and capability. Higher ground clearance, engines with more horsepower and torque, rear wheel drive or four wheel drive, and the ability to tow substantial payloads are common characteristics. The Willys Jeep in World War II inspired the segment with its go anywhere abilities and rudimentary style. Looking to the post World War II era, SUVs were typically called station wagons with four wheel drive like the International Harvester Travelo or the Willys Jeep Station Wagon. Intended to traverse tougher roads than a car, they had higher ground clearance. But when it came to a version more directed to sport, the Ford Bronco and Chevrolet Blazer became popular as did the Jeep Wrangler. SUVs have evolved quite a bit from the earlier days. Now they're often mid-level or luxury models that seldom go off-road. Many have powerful engines and three rows of seating and are primarily used as people haulers. For the wallet conscious, keep in mind that SUVs are on the pricey end of the scale and aren't known for their fuel economy. So really love an SUV, but not sure if you want to spend a gazillion dollars at the gas station? Well, there's yet another option, the crossover. The main difference between a crossover and an SUV is that crossovers are lighter and built on car platforms rather than a full truck chassis. They're designed for a combination of comfort, fuel efficiency, and versatility. Compared to a passenger car, they have higher seating position, larger cabin, 
a lift gate, and often have all-wheel or four-wheel drive. The array of crossovers in the market ranges from some of the most basic features possible to elegant luxury models with extreme horsepower. Somewhere in the middle, you can expect heated seats, a sunroof, seating for five, and an all-wheel drive system that can handle tougher conditions than a passenger car can. Arguably the most versatile type of vehicle, a crossover appeals to most people from singles and families to seniors and travelers. So yeah, go for it. Well, there's no mistaking a pickup truck body style. It has a passenger cab and an exposed cargo area, typically with box sides and a tailgate about half the height of the cab. Cabs can be single row or two rows with half size rear doors or full rear doors. Trucks commonly have higher than average horsepower options and are almost always either rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. Although the midsize pickup truck segment offers select front and all wheel drive options. Early examples include the one ton pickup truck from Rapid Motor Vehicle Company in 1902, although the Ford Model T made the style popular. Today, pickup trucks are among the most popular vehicles. They're an awesome blend of passenger space and dedicated cargo capacity. Plus, active lifestyles can use them to tow or haul surprising amounts of weight. Options range from stripped down no frills trucks to extremely luxurious models with massaging heats, leather upholstery, and ridiculous amounts of tech. Pickup trucks make a good choice for those who need to tow or haul or carry people or get through somewhat challenging terrain. There's a pickup truck that fits virtually any lifestyle. The downside is the sticker price. Pickups are now getting so expensive, we even made a video about it. Be sure to check that one out after you're done with this one. Now that seemed like a pretty exhaustive list, and frankly, I'm parched from all this talking. Hey, speaking of parched, did you ever notice that there are also cars that seem to have a curvy kind of classic Coke bottle shape? Well, this car design, first seen on the 62 Studebaker Avanti Gran Turismo, was introduced by famed French industrial designer Raymond Lowy, who actually was the original creator of the Coke bottle itself. Small world, huh? Inspired by the aeronautic designs of supersonic jets, these cars are known for their narrow center and flaring fenders. Examples of this design would be the Chevy Corvette, the second generation Dodge Charger, and the very sleek original supercar, the Lamborghini Miura. While we're chugging down this road, I don't want to fail to mention another style that may catch your eye, the Fastback. The Fastback design has a single unbroken slope from the roof to the rear bumper that gives the car a more aerodynamic look. Popular examples of a Fastback would be the old VW Beetle, which is also considered a coupe, and the Porsche 911, which has had the Fastback design since its debut in 1963. There's also the Camback, named after German aerodynamicist Wunibald Cam for his work developing the design in the 1930s. The Camback, or K-tail, is a styling feature where a car's Fastback-like slope abruptly ends like it's been cut off. This feature helps minimize drag and is commonly seen in hybrids like the Toyota Prius. Finally, the sleekest car shape that you'll see, most likely passing you at a very fast speed down a highway, is the Wedge. Mmm, cheese. Developed in the 1970s, these experimental concept and racing cars weren't very practical then, nor are they now, but boy are they fun to look at. The most recognizable wedge car has to be the DMC DeLorean, featured in Back to the Future. Other examples are the Lamborghini Countach and the Pontiac Firebird. Well, I hope this extensive but by no means exhaustive list has helped you on your car buying journey. Got a favorite car design? Tell us about it in the comments below. Looking to purchase? Check out Bumper's Marketplace to shop for used and new cars. And don't forget to give our video a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel for more supercharged content. Until next time.